<sighs> well, I'm stuck at home all afternoon with nothing to do but my laundry. So I figure this would be a good opportunity to go check out Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. Like many kids my generation, I love the original Beetlejuice movie. And there's proof, if I can unearth the footage, here is me getting party time Beetlejuice and the vanishing vault for my birthday. And Christ, not much stuff has changed. Look, I'm dressed pretty much exactly the same way. And look, there's Justin. We can rant all day about Tim Burton's original classic and how it stole the hearts of adults and kids alike. It was one of those perfect gateway movies for strange little kids like me that loved monsters and all things dark and scary. And I'll be damned if I didn't have a crush on Lydia when I was a kid. The movie had fantastic characters, quotable, memorable scenes that stand the test of time, and fantastic world building. There was no limit to where Tim Burton was going to take our imagination. But, let's face it, a nonsensical story. But, that's why we love it, right? Like, what the hell are sandworms from Saturn? And what are they doing in the afterlife? So, as much as I loved the original movie, I wasn't that really excited for a sequel, because let's face it, it was teased to death for years and years and years, that by the time we actually got a sequel, I kind of lost interest. In my opinion, Tim Burton hasn't done anything great since Big Fish, so maybe this is his return to form. So, is this going to be another Hollywood Greatest Hits movie? Or is Tim Burton actually going to be able to expand and build on the wonderful world and lore that he created back in 1988? So, while my laundry's in the dryer, I'm going to head out, check out the movie, come back, and give you guys my thoughts on Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. It's showtime. Well, I just got back from the theater. Am I going to be airing dirty laundry or folding clean laundry? So, unfortunately, I will be airing dirty laundry when it comes to Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. This may be the only review that you have seen where a man drinks a beer because he needs one and folds his laundry for a movie review because he needs to get his chores done at the same goddamn time. So here we go. Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. What a piece of shit. Really, like... I was expecting it to be like so-so. I wasn't expecting it to be boring and not funny. Two things that Beetlejuice should be is funny and fun. And it was neither of them. How could Beetlejuice be not fun and not funny? Well, I'll tell you how. Horrible fucking dialogue, number one. Dialogue in this movie was just horrendous. Like, a child could have written this shit. Another reason why it was boring was because there was actually too much going on. It's like they oversaturated you with plot lines so that you don't give a shit about any one of the plot lines. Like, come on! They basically wrote like four Beetlejuice sequels and shoved them into one movie. Way too much for anyone to kind of grasp. And we don't give a shit about any of these plot points because there's just not enough time spent with any of them to really develop them properly. So, let's go over all the different storylines happening in Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. Right off the bat, they explain the absence of Jeffrey Jones by, of course, killing off Charles Dietz. I expected that from the trailer. Well, that's fine and dandy. But they spend way too much time on that, like way too much time on the Charles Dietz funeral and death. You don't even sense that either Lydia or Delia care about the fact that the guy's dead. They don't shed a tear. Another plot point is that Lydia is now a famous TV show host. She goes ghost hunting because she can see ghosts. And her, like, producer, they don't really explain who the fuck he is, asks her to marry him. And that's another plot point that's happening in the movie. And they're going to get married on Halloween. Another plot point in Beetlejuice Beetlejuice is Lydia's kind of estranged daughter, Astrid, played by Jenna Ortega, is pissed off at Lydia because she feels that she's been abandoned by her ever since the death of her father, Lydia's husband. Another plot point in Beetlejuice Beetlejuice is Beetlejuice's plot point. And that's that he is being now stalked by his ex-wife who's come back from the dead in the afterlife, but she's still dead. That is the biggest throwaway plot line in the whole movie because it starts and then it completely stops and we don't see anything from that plot point 
for like an hour, and then it just kind of jumps back into the movie. Another plot point in this movie is that Astrid falls in love with a boy and is kind of tricked by him because he's actually a ghost and she can see ghosts the same way her mother can. Whew, man, that was exhausting just explaining all that shit. Now, those are all decent storylines by themselves. I think that any one of those could have worked as the main plot for this movie, but Jesus Christ, choose one or two. Don't put all that shit in this. Like, if you're gonna do all that shit, then just turn it into like a Netflix series or like make it a couple of episodes that you can watch on a streaming service. But man, it does disservice to all these kind of neat ideas by cramming them all into one movie. It's like those fucking Marvel movies and the DC Universe movies where it's like, how many bad guys can you fit into one movie. Since we're going down this rabbit hole, what else didn't I like about Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice? Well, for a movie called Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, it could have used a lot more Beetlejuice. Michael Keaton coming back as Beetlejuice is one of the biggest things. Like, you never thought he'd play the character again. So if you're gonna get him to play this character, make him steal the show. And he, like, kind of steals the show, but not really. Like, he should have been way more prominent in this movie. His storyline in the afterlife should have been the main storyline. We should have spent so much more time in the afterlife. That should have been the whole movie almost. In the afterlife, Beetlejuice trying to get back into the real world. But come on, you're gonna put that makeup back on Michael Keaton? Give him some real shit to do. Oh, by the way, if you're keeping an eye out to see if my underwear is anywhere in this pile, too bad, I already put it away. What else can I complain about here with Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice? Well, this movie seemed to have no real identity, no real kind of look or charm to it. When we go to the afterlife, it has the exact same look as it did in the original movie, pretty much, and that's a given. But like all the parts that take place in the real world are devoid of charm, devoid of like a stylistic look. It's just, as I said, boring. And was this just another Hollywood greatest hits type movie? Kind of, it kind of was. Talk about milking the whole waiting room part of Beetlejuice. Like, hey, the waiting room in the original movie in the afterlife was like a kind of a blip and it was a good blip, but they fucking milk that. How many more scenes do we need to take place in the waiting room in the afterlife? They just milked it so fucking hard. And then the ending, not to give it away, not that you couldn't guess in the first fucking place, takes place in a wedding chapel. Because it's a wedding! Again! At the end of Beetlejuice! Another wedding! Like, come on! Give us something fucking new here! Why does this movie need to end the exact same way the last movie fucking ended? Give us something new! And they did give us something new, and that was the backstory of Beetlejuice, which was kind of refreshing. The way they shot it was kind of neat, but... Who gives a shit because that storyline is brushed aside and completely forgotten about until the last minute of the movie. This movie really, really needed more Beetlejuice and more Lydia together as a team. That was one part of the movie that did give me a bit of goosebumps was to see Lydia and Beetlejuice team up in the afterlife to go save Astrid. That should have been the whole fucking movie. You're waiting all this time to see Lydia and Beetlejuice on the same screen together, and it barely happens. That's a great little 180 from the first movie. They're kind of at odds. Beetlejuice is so-called the bad guy, but when they team up together, that flips that narrative on its ass, and that would have been a great way to continue the movie where Beetlejuice and Lydia team up for like almost the whole movie. But then it just turns into a rehash of the first one again. And even Danny Elfman's score in this movie was lacking. Like, of course, there's the main theme. It kicks in, gets your blood boiling, gets you ready for this movie. And then it just kind of gets boring. Like, nothing really memorable happens as far as the musical motifs. You get the main theme, and that's it. It's over. Like, Danny Elfman... Tim Burton, match made in heaven, like Danny Elfman's best scores are for Tim Burton movies. He scored many other movies that weren't Tim Burton movies, but they're kind of forgettable. 
So this is a great chance for Danny Elfman to kind of get back at it, create those awesome themes again, those awesome melodies, those quirky little sounds and everything. And it just doesn't happen. It's just the main theme and then a bunch of contemporary music. The best way to sum up Beetlejuice Beetlejuice is like a band reunion that only has like one or two members of the original band in it. So it's devoid of the essence and the soul of the original band. That's exactly what happens here. I remember someone at work asked me, well, is a lot of the cast returning for Beetlejuice Beetlejuice? And I was like, yeah, most of them are. And then I named off, well, Winona Ryder, Catherine O'Hara, Michael Keaton, and then realized, oh, yeah, I guess not the whole cast is returning because we're missing Gina Davis, Alec Baldwin, Jeffrey Jones. There's a good chunk of the main cast from the original not here, and that's fine. They don't all have to be there. But this really does feel like a half-assed band reunion. Like those shitty albums the Monkees put out in the 80s without Michael Nesmith. And like that Pantera reunion tour that happened, which is more like a fucking cover band because both Dimebag Daryl and Vinnie Paul are dead. That's exactly what I felt about this movie. It was like a bad reunion tour, missing half the members and missing all the essence and soul from the original. In this case, they just took way too many ideas and shoved them in a blender and hoped it would come out okay. And it just turned out to be a hot mess. Pick one or two things and run with it and make it great as opposed to taking four or five storylines and doing a half-assed job at all of them. It was embarrassing. I was in the theater like this a lot of the time. And guess what? Nobody else in the movie theater laughed at one part of this movie. I was not the only one. Nobody giggled, nobody snickered, nobody laughed or howled. It was fucking dead silent the whole time. Since I've just finished ranting about all the shit I didn't like about this movie, what did I like about this movie? Not much. Like, we got to see Michael Keaton as Beetlejuice again. That's about it. Like, really, it was all wasted opportunity. Wasted time, wasted talent. We waited all these years for three great talents. Michael Keaton, Winona Ryder, Catherine O'Hara to reprise their roles and they were given a horrible script to work with. It was great seeing those three on screen again together, but it wasn't an ensemble. That was a huge issue. And these guys can be a great ensemble. They are a great ensemble. They were just all so disconnected. All the storylines were disconnected. It was just too much. You've heard the term, too little, too late? This was too much too late. Way too much too late. Okay, that's enough ranting for me. I'm gonna go put my folded laundry away, get supper in the oven so my wife is not mad at me when she gets home. Then I'll just regurgitate all this to her at the dinner table anyways.